says, for what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Abraham trusted God. He didn't trust in himself. He didn't trust in what he saw. He didn't trust in his circumstances. He trusted in God's word to him, and that God accounted to him as right standing. Verse number four, now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, doesn't depend on his own self-righteousness, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. When we realize that we, our hope is in God, we have to trust in God, we have no righteousness of our own, we have no ability to accomplish successfully of our own outside of God. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, but without him we can do what? Nothing. We have to depend on the Lord. Say, I depend on God. All right, if you depend on God, that means you honor his word, you obey his word, you do what his word uh, influences you to do. Romans 4, verse 16. Therefore, it is of faith. Faith is what's needed in the midst of a storm. It is of faith that it might be by grace. This is a gift of God. To the end, that the promise might be sure, sure. You have assurance to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham. What is the faith of Abraham? Believing God, trusting God. When you trust God the way Abraham did, then you have victory in life. Who is the father of us all? That's Abraham. Verse 17, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. This is what God told to Abraham. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. See, that's what God does. God calls those things that are not as though they were. He calls those things that are unseen as though they were, as though they were seen. God calls things that are unseen as though they were seen. God calls things that are unseen as though they were seen. God talks to things that you can't see as though you can see them. God talks to things that you can't see, that you're hoping for, that you're believing for, that you're trusting his word for. He calls those things or speaks to those things as if they are in existence. Like if you have a kid and they go, uh, they're outside playing and you want them to come in for dinner. What would you do? You call to the kid, hey, Johnny, come on in. It's time for dinner. But Johnny's not in, but you're calling him as though he's in and as though you're having him to come in, you don't necessarily see him. You're just calling out the window, Johnny, come in. And Johnny might be on the football field somewhere. I know in my neighborhood, there was a, like a vacant field over there where all the kids played football, the guys played football and whatever. And parents would just call for him, don't go outside the door. Don't, they won't go outside the door. They just call for him. Johnny, come in. And see, that's what he's saying faith does. God's faith. God's faith calls things that you can't see as though you can see them. Like, for instance, God calls an empty cupboard full. You can't see any full in it. All you see is empty. But God says, my cupboard is full. And he says, your cupboard is full. So you learn to talk like God. You go around saying, my cupboard is full. And somebody's looking and saying, you just is crazy. You know there's nothing up there in your cupboard, but you see the unseen as seen. You see the unseen as seen. Well, it's the same thing, it's the same thing with, with, with wellness. See, you don't call what you see sickness. You don't call that in. You call what you don't see. You call health. I call health into my body in Jesus' name. I believe I'm healed by Jesus' stripes, amen? You don't see it. The doctor's showing you something else on the, on the, on the uh, x-ray. You don't see it, but you're speaking as though it is. You're not speaking as though it's not, and you're not saying it's not. You're not saying it's not what they see. It's not what they say. You're just not paying attention to what they're saying, and you're calling what you want. The Bible says he calls those things that be not health as though it were. I'm healed according to Jesus' stripes, by Jesus' stripes. I call it healed. It may not be, but I call it healed until healing manifests. Remember, it's the evidence, your faith. 
is the evidence that causes it to manifest. You're trusting what God has said. You're trusting confidence in the word of God. That's what causes it to manifest. So you keep calling it the way you want it to be. You keep calling forth what you want to see. My kids are blessed and they're living for the Lord in the name of Jesus. I just believe by faith that they're living for the Lord. I believe by faith that my kids are saved in Jesus' name. They might be out there doing all kinds of things. And your friends will look at you and say, you know that boy is not saved. But I'm calling it into existence. I don't, I'm not calling what I see. I'm calling what I don't see as though it's seen. That's what the Bible says. He calls those things that be not, they're not, but he calls them as though they are. Amen. And that's what you and I have to learn to do. We learn to talk like God talks. We learn to believe like God believes. That's the God kind of faith. Say the God kind of faith. That's God's kind of faith. God didn't see sun, moon, stars, uh, clouds, water. He didn't see mankind, but he called it into existence. And guess what? He began to see what he called, not what he didn't see. Amen? God called those things into existence. That's what the Bible says. And he had what he said when he called it into existence. And so that's what Abraham began to do. He began to believe like God said he was going to be a father of many nations. Here I am with no children. I, God's world, I'm going to be a father of many nations. How am I going to have children like the sand on the seashore? How am I going to have enough seed like the stars in the sky? I don't even have one seed. But he believed God. He believed the word of God that came to him. If you believe the word of God that comes to you, guess what? You will stand in that same anointing. You've got to have confidence in God's word. You have to have assurance and anticipation. You can't be sure that God is a good God. Just say, God is a good God. Oh, yeah, God is a good God. Oh, yeah, God, God, God is great. You can't just say, walk around saying that and not expecting him to be that for you. See, Hebrews eleven six 6 says that we have to also believe that he is a rewarder. Not just that he's God, but he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You got to believe that about God. God wants to reward you, not take away from you. God wants to build you, not cut you down. That's what God wants. That's God. He wants to bring good to our lives. But we got to believe, yeah, we got to believe that he is. You got to believe that he is, that's for sure. You can't not believe that he's God. You got to believe that he is. You got to believe that he exists. You got to believe that he's God. But you also got to believe he wants to do this for me. You got to believe he loves me and he wants to reward me. He's my rewarder, glory to God. He's the lifter of my head, hallelujah. God wants me to feel good. He don't want me to be downtrodden. God wants me to feel good. God wants me to be happy. God wants me to have joy. So I got to believe that so I can step into my joy. Become a new you today by changing your mind. And so you say, how do I know God? And how do I know how God sounds? How do I know what God speaks? You know it by the word of God. He has left this for us so that we will know how he thinks. And we will know his ways. His ways can be our ways. In order to have something you have never had, you must do something you have never done. And the first step is to change and renew your mind. You know you're trying to stay away from that fornication, and you know if you talk to that person, you're going to get drawn over that. Don't answer that call. And then call AT&T and say, I want a new number. Visit JesusPeopleMiami.org to order this encouraging four-CD teaching series, Change Your Mind, by Dr. Gloria Williams. Place your order today 